to mapping where today we're going to focus on the end game so you've made your map you've made your lights you are now ready that you think your map is nice and fully completely done and then that was the fun part of actually playing your map to make sure the map is actually it is good and it is actually done and ready to upload we're also going to talk about how to have other uh how to, how to have others test play your map as well as how to then finally once it's all said and done how to upload your map to be saver so other people can then play it all right, so we'll head on over to the, uh, the BSMG wiki, head on over to our members' resources, and then at first head on down to playtesting. So when it comes to playtesting, playtesting is a really important step in the mapping process because, again, you want your map to be playable. You want it to, you know, to actually you know, do what you want to do. You want to make sure it's fun, and you want to make sure it works. So it is very important that you guys are always constantly test playing your maps, if not, you know, if, if, if you guys aren't test playing it every single little, little ADB edition, you know, you don't have to do that part. But at least once you have, you know, a large majority of your map done or completely done, test it at the end to make sure everything does work properly because there's some stuff that as you're in the editor, you might miss. Some stuff that might look like it's a comfy hit, it might look like it'd be fun to do. And then you get into the game and realize that pattern is a complete hot mess and why did you even consider actually doing it? So you definitely want to make sure you guys are testing your maps first. So if you're a PC player, it's going to be really easy. Just basically, you know, load up the game and then find the WIP folder and then you'll play it. In a little bit, I will actually go into the game to show you how you guys go about doing that. As well as, you know, getting out, uh, showing you some other fun tricks you can do in there. But let's say if you are uh, if you are playing with a quest, there are a couple other steps you will need to go through. Unfortunately, I do not have a quest, so I can't really actually, you know, probably explain these steps. But lucky us, on the wiki page, if you are a quest player and you're ready to test play your map, you need to head on up to the wiki, head on to the quest section, and then just follow along with all these steps to then get your map, your, your map onto the quest and then play it yourself. And hey, would you look at that? We have a nice little lovely, lovely how-to video set up to actually have you guys ready to go about doing this. But, you know, that, I get that's a request. If you are just on a PC, it actually is going to be really easy to actually, you know, get up and actually play your song. So for now, I'm going to basically pause the video real quick and um, uh, get into my VR setup. And then I'll kind of walk you guys through how to find your map in game and then how to test play it. All right. So now here we are back in Beat Saber. So now comes the fun part of actually going, uh, going through a map and actually playing it to make sure everything is nice and good and well and ready to go. So there are a few things we do want to keep in mind. Number one, how are we playing the map? So if you guys remember, and we have, we're looking through this, we have these two different ways of play. We have solo play and party play. So solo play, this is the one that when you're playing it, you actually are, you know, generating your scores and uploading them over to the Score Saber websites. Party mode, you're only playing locally. Scores are just being saved on the computer, not being uploaded anywhere. So when we're testing our maps, we want to make sure you do not play in part uh, in solo mode because if you do you run the risk of uploading the scores you generate towards score saver. And now whenever you are making a map, every time you change something on that map, it's going to generate a new leaderboard. So if you test it once, it'll generate a leaderboard. If you then, you know, add a, uh, I, uh, change uh, some sections around, move some nodes, add some blocks, test it again, it'll be a whole new separate leaderboard because it's a whole new song. It's a whole new song key and hash. So we do not want to play it in solo mode because we don't want we basically are trying to avoid having any scores generated. So instead, we are going to be playing it over in party mode. So once once we're over in party mode, hopefully you guys will hopefully have and have the um the, the song core mod installed. I'm assuming that if you guys are playing custom songs, you probably do already have it because you know it's great and helpful. So, as long as you have the song core mod, if you look on the bottom, you will see all these various different song folders. So, we have the OST, the music packs, playlists, and if we hand over to custom levels all the way on the right, you should see two different folders. One is listed as custom levels. The other has a lovely little me uh, mediocre mapper icon for our custom whip levels. So, head on over to custom levels, select our whip levels. This will bring us to all any any songs that are right now currently in our folder, which we can easily see 
we do see the map that we were just working on earlier. So now the question is, why are we using the whip levels folder instead of the custom levels folder? Notice right now, this play button is grayed out. I cannot, no matter how many times I try, how hard I push this button, I cannot play it in play mode. I can only play it in practice mode. So again, the reason for this is by playing it in practice mode, this is another safety feature that we will not upload a score to score saber. So by playing it in party mode and in practice mode, we have double security that whenever we're playing this, we are not going to accidentally generate a leaderboard for our map, which is great so that way score saber doesn't get overloaded and they have issues with all of their just completely meaningless leaderboards generated for every single whip song. So we're going to play it in practice mode. So another thing you'd, uh, I would also point out is another mod you do want to get is going to be the the, the practice plugin because we do, the, the game does have its own default pra practice mode, but with the plugin, there's going to be a couple extra features we can use I'm going to show you in a minute. All right, so we have our song. I always suggest playing in no fail mode because, again, you know, it helps, you know, just to not fail out anything anything as you guys are, you know, kind of testing stuff. All right, so we got no fail on, whip folder, practice mode, play. Boop. So one thing I do want to point out is, remember how when we were going back way at the start with, you know, generating that song offset and putting in that silence in there? The reason for that is this time right here. So that way the song loads in, the player has some time to kind of situate, uh, situate themselves, get ready to get play, get their arms out. I know for me, because I, I play with uh, WMR, the tracking tends to kind of be an issue and I, make I need to make sure that, you know, as I'm getting ready, I adjust my headset bring up my saber so I can make sure that my sabers are ready to go. So I would, I like having that little bit of extra time, but again, all players like having that little bit of extra time. So that's why you do want to uh, uh, have, have the stuff in there. So now comes our notes. So like you see, yeah, we just still have all those timing notes we had from before. All right. So yay, we're testing our map. So now, why did I say I wanted the practice mode plugin? Well, if you notice, when I pause the game, I have these extra little things down here I can play with, namely NJS spawn offset. So if you remember when we were first making the map, when we were looking at those NG the NJS and offset values, when you're just looking at the map, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, you can gauge on, on, the, on the actual, you know, the uh, the spawn distance and uh, the half jump duration of you know what looks good for a given difficulty, but until you actually get in the game and play it, is when you actually will find out if those numbers you had selected earlier work or not. So say in this case, now that I'm in the game, as I'm playing it, I can realize oh the numbers I had, they were bad. So now I can be in here and I can adjust these as I need to to find out what works and what doesn't work. And then once I find out what values work and what values don't work. I can then go back into the editor, put those new values in, and now my song is nice and good and ready to go. So, all right. So now it comes a fun part of actually you know, playing this map on our own, testing it a couple times, seeing pat what patterns work, what patterns don't work. So once we play test it ourselves, we'll find, you know, we kind of go through it and be able to be, to be nice and good. So say we go through, the, through this process several times. So we're playing the map on our own. We test it here. We make our adjustments. We play it, try it again, make some more adjustments, go through all this, and we now have our map relatively done that we think. But there is one problem with testing the map on your own and only on your own. And that issue is called what is known as mapper blindness. So the issue is that you are the mapper of this song. You have spent so much time in the editor listening to the song over and over and over again. You spent countless hours putting in those blocks, looking at those patterns, thinking about your ideas. You know everything there is to know about this song, about this map. You know exactly what your intentions were. You know when to expect certain patterns. You know what's going to be coming up. You know exactly how you're supposed to deal with everything inside of this map. Other players, however, are not going to have that luxury. They're going to come in, download the song, and then play it and have absolutely no idea at all about what is coming up. So even though you've tested yourself on your own, you've played through it thoroughly, you can full combo it completely entirely in your sleep, 
But again, that's because you have like something like 20 hours looking at this thing. So you want to have other people test it as well. Who do I mean by other people? Well, some people say, well, I, I have friends. I can have my friends test it. I have family. I can have them test it. Not to sound mean, but your friends and family are not Beat Saber players. They are not Beat Saber mappers. They are your friends and family. They want to see you do good. They want to help you. They want to see you succeed. So when you make a map and have them try it, their feedback is probably going to be a little bit sugar-coated and they're not going to be all that critical of it because, again, they want to have you feel good. They don't want to have you feel bad, so they're going to be pretty nice when it comes to giving you this feedback. So how can we have other people test it, but that is not, you know, your friends and family? Well, we have the BSMG Discord server. So the BSMG Discord server is full of people, you know, like myself and other mappers who spend our time, you know, discussing mapping on this in the server. But we also have a test play channel set up so that way people can upload their maps and have, you know, me and others test them out. We tend to be a little bit more critical about them because, again, we are mappers. We want to see good maps created. So we will be relatively brutally honest with your feedback. We will try to be nice and not make you feel bad about it, but we will tell you exactly, you know, this pattern you had, it does not work. There's problems with this section. We will give you more specific feedback on how to fix your map. So once you spend some time playing it on your own, you then want to head over to there to then have your map tested. So that brings us to the next question. How do we use the Discord server? How do we get other people to test our map? So now I'm going to, I'm going to take a hot second, pop, pop, pop out of VR, and I will be back on the computer, and I will walk you guys through how to get find that uh, test page channel and how to up your, your apps to there. So give me one quick second, and I will see you once I get out of VR. All right, so now that we're out of the game, we've tested a map a lot on our own. So now we think our map is nice and good and ready to play. But like I was just saying, we don't want to you know just rely on our, our own selves testing it. We want to have other people test it as well. The more eyes that we have looking at a map, the more errors we can catch, the more sure we could be that the map we've made is now nice and good and ready to upload. So now that we've had, you know, done our own template testing, we're going to look, uh, look into what's known as community or third-party testing, where, like I was just talking about, our Beat Saber mod, uh, modding group to actually look at the maps with us, you know, with, with, uh, with a lot of other people, so that we can actually have a lot of, you know, people looking at it to make sure everything is nice and good as well. So in order to do this, we first need to actually have our map nice and good and zipped up. So we have two ways to go about this. Option number one, the best option, is remember when we were back at our editor, we did have, you know, some other options here that we go, go to look at our map. We have this lovely little button here, package song to zip. So what this will do is this will zip up all the song files that we need to then be ready to then share, not only in, in terms of, you know, on the Discord to have other people download and test it, but also, we have all the files in Elf, um, zipped up correctly so that we can actually then also upload this to Beat, uh, Beat Saver as well. So best option, click this button. And then now if we head on over to our song folder, look at that. We have our nice, we have our zip fo folder all now ready to go to then upload. The other option is we could actually you know, do this manually by just you know zipping up the files on our own. This I don't really suggest because, again, you, you got this button, all right? This, this button does exactly what you need. Why complicate things? But if you really want to do the complicated way, you can then also zip the files yourselves. Namely, all of the files that are contained inside of your map folder, you just need to then um, zip up. So we don't want to zip up, you know, the folder itself. We just want the files themselves. So what we can do is just um, highlight the ones we want. Then we'll then... I personally use 7-zip, so then say, okay, we'll just then add it to biscuit.zip, and then we're good. Otherwise, you do have the built-in Windows one to, say, send to compressed zip folder. I already have 7-zip because I've had it for so many years, and I just recently moved it from computer to computer to computer, so I have it there. But you also have, you know, built-in Windows one for you. But like I say, you just know how the folders you want. Add it to biscuit.zip. Which, you know, just happened to be the exact same thing we just had. So, again, we are good and okay to then move forward use, uh, doing this. Now, this is especially true that if you guys have ever, you know, if you guys ever do, do a collaboration with people and actually have uh, other people listed on your map, you actually can include um, other pictures in here. Namely, you know, the uh, other icons for the, uh, for the people who helped with your map. 
This is how you would uh, get those th in that folder as well. This option will not do that. You will actually have to do that on your own. But again, it all depends if you, if you use the contributors tab or not. So now we now that we have our folder, what we want to do is head on over to Discord. Inside of the BSMG modding group, we have all these lovely tabs over here. We want to head on down over to the creative corner and go to the test place channel. This is where everyone will then upload their maps for other people to play. If you notice, we have this lovely little list here of all these maps that people have, you know, have put up uh, put up to test. So I will warn you that sometimes it can take a little bit of time for the testers to basically kind of work their way through this. For the most part, depending on when you upload it, feedback is usually ready for people within one, uh, basically you know, one to two days. Worst case scenario, if it's a really bu busy time frame, you, you might actually have a little bit longer wait. We're basically looking at three, four, or five days. It's very rare you ever have to wait any longer than that, though. But now the question is, though, we need to uh, uh, upload this file properly to make sure that, you know, other people are going to play it. Namely, if you look through this, you see everyone's message is formed in a very specific way. So we head on over to our pins. We do have a, a, a template here for you guys to follow along with in order to upload your map. So when you guys are writing out the message, all you need to do is just copy this template, place it in your message, and then fill out the information. So what information do we need? Well, we need the map, what map is being played, I know being tested, so you know just the standard stuff that we know, the song file, and then the artist. And if you want, you can also include what version number it is if you've gone through this process a couple of times. We'll also have the song length, so how long is your song? So that way as people you know, are looking through this, they can basically kind of gauge how much time do they have to basically put into their actual testing session? Especially if there's a lot of longer songs, there's a chance that testers might skip it because again, some of these uh, test-based sessions, you know, can run up, you know, 10, 20, 30 plus maps. I think my record is like 25 maps, I think, tested. But there was one legendary tester who would actually test like 70 maps in a session. Oh, Red Meiji, we miss you, come back. But in either case, so you want to include that link so that we people have an idea of how long they might have to have their test session running for. You also include the BPM so that way people can kind of have a rough gauge of how difficult is this song going to be. A 120 BPM Expert Plus is going to play differently than a 180 BPM Expert Plus. So some testers only can only test you know, so, uh, so, uh, so far in terms of difficulty. So this is something they want to uh, basically have in back box so that they can kind of gauge of what stuff can they test, what stuff should they skip. We also want to include whatever difficulties you've included. So that way, once again, some testers can only test certain skills. Me personally, I'm a lower, a lower to mid expert plus player. Mid, uh, some mid higher expert plus stuff really gives me a lot of trouble. So as I'm looking through some of, the, uh, some of these test plays, if I only see an expert plus, I might skip it because I don't know what kind of extra plus is, is it going to be. Is it going to be a low extra plus that might be in my range? Or is it going to be a really high extra plus that might be out of my range? For something like an expert, oh, this I can test. Something like this where it's an expert plus and a hard. Well, in that case, there's a lower difficulty that I personally can test my on myself to see, okay, I, if I can do the hard, do I think the extra plus might be in my range? So that way you want to include what those difficulties are included. And then finally the feedback type, and the status. So the feedback type is, what specifically do you want them to look out for? So do you have any you know, specific patterns you, you want to make get tested on? Do you want to make sure, you know, just does it play right? Does it, does it play well? Are there flow issues? Just kind of specifically, what do you want Mavericks to look out for? For the most part, you can basically just say, you just want a general feedback because you just want to know, is this map good? Does it work? So, if, if, so you just say, oh, I just, I just want you know general feedback of the song. But you do want to say if there is something specific that you are concerned about, mention that in this. That way, as a tester is looking through this, if there's one section that you were really worried about, like say, hey, I had this, I had this stream at, you know, minute 30. Is that okay? So that way, as a test player is going through it, oh, they want me to focus in on this section. I'm going to really make sure I mention this in my video. And then also finding the status, that's just, you know, how, mu how much stuff has been done on your map. Is the map complete? Is the, are, are there lights? Are there no lights? Are you planning any stuff coming up? Like, are you planning on adding lights at some point? Are you planning on adding any extra difficulties at some point? So that way, test players can have, have an idea of what kind of map am I expecting to play? Is it something that has already got been vetted and, and that should be okay? Or is it something that has not been tested yet and I don't know what to expect? So if it's a new map, you can just say, you know, untested, or just you know, or just mentioned was self-tested, but hasn't been looked at by other people. So that way, 
testers have an idea of what they're going to be getting into. So all we need to do is just head on over. Oops. We'll copy our template. Biscuit. And it was an NCS release. The song length was about 230. BPM was 128. The difficulty, an expert plus. I said plus. Feedback type, general feedback. Any awkward hits? Do you triangles work? DDs are bad. <laughs> and status, untested. Fully lit. Other difficulties coming soon. All right, so we have our uh, basically what we're looking for. So all we need to do is grab that zip folder we have made, drag it over, and say, all right, upload it up. So now for me personally, my internet is kind of not great, so I'm just going like, to kind of let that do its thing. But as you can see, if you have done everything, if your uh, file has been formatted correctly and there are no issues, you should see our little CMB channel monitor bot should pop up with a preview link for your map. If you do not see this link pop up, that's a good sign that there is a problem with your map. Either you didn't zip it correctly, or there's an uh, issue with your info dot, uh, with your intro files. There's an issue somewhere in your map that this preview could not load your map. Again, remember, like we were talking about in the, uh, the other video, this website is going to load up your map just like the game would. If the website can't load it, that means that the game is not going to be able to load it. So it's a good chance that, yeah, there's going to be a problem somewhere in this. Another, another thing I do I want to mention is, once you have, then have this file up there, you're basically going to be waiting and basically looking for some, some testers to basically do certain reactions to your song full, uh, and to, to your post. So questions are, what do those little reactions mean? So if you basically see this little eye reaction, this means that a tester has seen your map, has downloaded it, is planning on testing it, and you should expect feedback coming at some point. Once you see this little check mark, this now means, okay, I, I have tested this map, my feedback is done, I have uploaded my feedback, you should have gotten a message from me somehow. You should have either gotten a ping, or you should have gotten a DM from me. If you've included other difficulties in your song, you might see little letters. These letters then are listed for what difficulties did they test. Some testers will test all difficulties, some testers will only test one or two difficulties on your map. So... If you only have one difficulty uploaded, like in, case, in this case that we do, this will only be basically you should only expect to see the eyes and the check mark, and then we're done. If we compare that to this other posting, this one has an expert plus and a hard. This person should expect to get either a, a little P to say someone tested the expert plus, or a little H to say that someone has tested their hard. So now that it's up there, now it comes a waiting game of waiting for someone to come along and then test our map for us. And then uh, some other notes you might see. These you don't really see all that often, but sometimes you might. A little skull on crossbones. This just means that someone who has tested your map ended up being outside of their skill range. So you should take their feedback with a grain of salt because there might be some hits that, you know, where they struggled with, was it because it was a skill issue and they just couldn't play it? Or was it because the actual pattern itself was bad and that's why they failed? So a lot of times, you know, that's why most testers will only test stuff that's in their range because they want to make sure that their test, that their feedback is actually accurate. So that's for me personally, if I only see an expert plus, I will skip it because I don't know if it's going to be in my range and if it's something that I should just not test at all and just skip it and move on. I will only test expert plus if there are those other difficulties that I can use to gauge is it going to be in my range? Or if it's someone I know and that they see the account only maps in my kind of range, or they kind of warn me, hey, this even though it says extra plus, it's only like you know like four like four point five NPS. I think I'll handle it. And I guess okay, I'll give it a shot. That's another option that if you guys are as you guys are up uploading this, 
you could include that inside of, of the, your difficulty explanation to say, hey, it's X for plus, was it so much NPS? So that way, our testers can also kind of gauge that of, you know, what they think. But now that it's up there, now it becomes a fun part of, okay, we're going to wait, get our feedback. But at some point, we're going to get our feedback, and we're going to learn, is our map good or bad? And they also say, and once we get our feedback, we decided we need to make changes to it and want to upload another test. As we're going through this, we want to tell people that I'm now done with this version. This version is an old version. You don't need to test this anymore. So we want to add in a little reaction for a stop sign. So by adding the stop sign, this will tell people, do not test this map. This is either A, this map has been done and uploaded, or this is an old version. You should not test this at this point. Now, recently, as, as the time is recording, a lot of new mappers have not been adding the stop sign to their maps. And as a tester, this is completely infuriating. Because, again, as a tester, I only have so much time to actually go through and test maps. I don't want to waste my time. There have been a number of times where as I'm, as I'm going through and I'm pulling maps to download and in order to test, well, I will go in, I will start testing the map, and then I will then notice that at the end of my recording, I actually can vote on the map. This map is actually on Beat Saver right now. That means that the map is done. I have now wasted my time testing a map that had already been released. So you want to make sure when you do any alterations to your map where you have a new version coming up, or you're are actually completely done with your map and you're going to upload it for to Beat Saver, add this stop sign in so people will know this no longer needs to be tested. We are done with it. One note that I will say is for, for test plays, most testers, though, will have a rule of three. They will only test a given map three times. So you don't want to waste one of your things on when know something you forgot the stop sign. So that's, you know, a little bit of a tangent for me to kind of remind you to make sure you add the stop sign in there. So do keep that in mind as, as you guys are uploading stuff for, for testing. Try to limit it to limit it so that it's fully done or nearly fully done because you don't want to have, you know, someone test your map that only has like 20 seconds in there. And then you've blown one of your, you know, uh, one shot to three. All right, so now let's say, you know, we're, we've gone through this. We've gotten our feedback. We've gone through this process a couple of times. You've, you've done these iterations. You, you've made all the corrections. Your map is now completely done, ready for the public to play. How do we do this? Well, if we head on over back to our mapper wiki, we now have a little section of publishing your songs and how to go about doing this. So in order to release a map, you're going to be uploading it to the Beat Saver website, which you guys should hopefully be already familiar with and by getting your own songs. If, however, you are more familiar with Beast Saber instead, that's basically just Beat Saver with fancy bells and whistles. Beast Saber will pull their maps from Beat Saver. So Beat Saver is where every single map that is ever made for public consumption is stored. All Beast Saber does is just pull the maps from this website. So in order to have other people play your map, you need to upload it here to be played. So the first thing you will need to do is make sure you have an account on Beat Saber in order to upload stuff. So all you need to do is just head on over to Beat Saber and then click the create an account icon, fill out their form, and then you should get an email at some point relatively soon. And then you basically click on it and okay, you have your, you know, you have your account created. Head on over to Beat Saber, you'll sign in. Now once you sign in, you will have a new button at the top for uploading. So if you click on Upload, it's going to bring us to this page where we now start fitting in all the information for our map. So the first thing we need is your beat map title. Once again, you know, what song did you make and what was the artist? If you want to try to, if you want, you can include other tags in order to get your map, uh, you know, picked up. Do keep in mind, though, there is a 255 character limit on your, uh, on your title. So you don't want to add in too much, but some stuff you, want, you might want to mention is, is it a chroma map? Is it a mapping extension map? How many lanes is it? Is it, you know, does it have fancy, funky walls? Is it a one saber map? Is it, is it a Darth Maul map? Basically anything, anything that would basically consider your map to be something different than a normal map, you could also include it in your title outside of just, you know, the artist and then the um, song name. As for your beat map description, this is where you just describe your map. So a lot of people decide to just leave this blank, but, you know, you really don't want to do it. You should at least mention something about your map. 
So what I like to do is I will mention, you know, just some random tagline about the map. Either, you know, I might quote some lyrics or just, you know, make some connection to the map somehow. And then I'll mention some extra information about this map. So I'll mention what the BPM is. I'll make a list of here's all the here's how many notes there are on all the difficulties. Here's what the NPS is of every single difficulty. Here's how many bombs you can expect. Here's how many walls you can expect. And then I will do a generic thanks for basically whoever, you know, whoever had played this on my map, whoever had given me information about the, any comments about the map. It's a really good option to, you know, give, you know, thanks to the people who have put their time in helping your map get ready. So I will always, you know, in my descriptions, I will always, you know, make a list of, hey, thanks so-and-so for, for testing my map or, get, you know, asking, answering your questions about our map. So we will then say, okay, choose a file. This group will just, you know, select our, select our zip and then click our upload button. And then the, the website will load, do its loading thing. I'm not going to do that because when it comes to up, 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 um, uploading Beat Saver maps, this is for completed work. This is for maps that have gone through the testing process that are ready for public consumption. One of the biggest pet peeves we ever, for all of us ever have, is seeing this. Seeing a long list of work in progress maps. This is the worst thing we ever see. Or they're put, put in stuff about, you know, test maps. Or stuff about, you know, don't play this maps. Do not, and I repeat, do not do this when you are uploading a map to Beat Saber. Again, Beat Saber is for completed work. There are just so many work in progress, incomplete maps. It's honestly a problem because the more stuff that we have up on Beat Saber, the more server space it's taking up, the more bandwidth it's taking up, and it just causes so many problems. So, please don't do this. Again, some people like that. Well, they just they'll, they'll you know they'll say, "Oh, do not play," or "Do not download," but. Okay, my internet sucks and it's not loading in. Oh, there we go. You saw you saw some real quick. But okay, it'll basically say, do not play this or do not download. But people aren't going to listen. They're going to download it to tap play. Anyway, notice this map. Test. Do not play. Has 95 downloads. People have downloaded to play, even though you told them not to, unless you had unless you had someone test it 95 times. Again, do not ever upload incomplete work to Beat Saver. It's a problem. Only upload completed work. You will notice, even for this test video, I will not upload this file because this file is not complete. I am not going to upload it just as a test to show you what will happen because it's not a complete map. I am a firm believer in, you know, practicing what you preach. I will not upload this just to show you how to do this because, again, it's incomplete. Beat Saver is for only completed maps. Hopefully, this rant about uploading uh, work in progress maps has gotten the point across to do not ever upload a work in progress to Beat Saver. One, people, one reason a lot of people will do this is they'll basically upload it to Beat Saver to get it on their quest. But you don't have to do that because we have instructions here to get your map on your quest. Another thing people will do is they will upload their map to Beat Saver to then be able to request it from a streamer. This is also a problem because again, it's a work, it's a web map, it's you know taking server space. But again, the other issue is other people are gonna be able to play it too. Streamers are not going to know how to properly test the song. Chances are they're not going to do those little you know stuff that I showed you earlier about they're not going to uh, test it in party mode, they're not going to test it in practice mode, they're just going to hit play, and they're going to generate a scoreboard, and they're going to make adjustments, and then, you know, upload it into to them, and then it's just getting so many, you know, scoreboards generated, so many, you know, whips up these ever generated, it's just not a good thing. Instead, if you want other people to test your map for you, this is why we have this, te this, this test place channel, so you can post it here, and then people who do know how to probably test a map can then find it, test it, and then give you your feedback. If you are scared about, you know, having it being a public test, you could just, you know, put in your, you know, feedback. Please DM me the feedback so that way people won't 
post your shame for the world masses to see. So, because a lot, you know, a lot of times they'll just, you know, ping you in the cert, uh, ping you over a mapping discussion, and then go from there. But if you don't want that, they'll send it as a daemon test. So that way, it's nice and private. So that's why we want to t post it here to test, not post it here to test, because again, we want to make sure only people who actually know what they're doing are testing it for you and giving you proper feedback. The other problem with streamers is a lot of them are not themselves mappers, so they don't really know really good things to watch out for. There are a lot of times that where streamers will play a map and think, oh, this, this map was fine. But there was a lot of awkward hits that they didn't, couldn't really quite explain what was awkward about it. They could have been going through, playing it like, oh yeah, this hit felt weird. I don't know what was wrong with it. So if they don't know what's wrong with it, they, not, they don't know how to tell you how to fix it. But us as mappers, we can basically play through map and realize, oh, I know exactly why this is wrong. It's because you made a triangle. It was an awkward reset. This is you. Sh you should fix this by doing by doing this other thing. So now you know how to fix it. And you can then go from there. So hopefully the point is to come across to not upload a work in progress map. Just sa save it for when your map is fully done to then upload it. It's on the on its own. Again, honestly, there wasn't really a whole lot I could basically mention for this video. So that's why I want to spend a lot of time really stressing this point because. We see this problem a lot with this, and that's why I wanted to really get the point home. This is for your map is fully nice and done. So now that we've gone through, we've gone through all the steps, we've made our map, we've uploaded to Beat Saver. Now comes the fun part of sitting with an existential dread and hoping people are going to like your map. So when it does come to a first map, don't feel bad if, if you do get some bad feedback on if, if it doesn't come out as great as you would like it to be, because again. It was a first map, you know, you were, you were still learning how to map. It might have not have been that great. Don't feel bad about it. I mean, everyone's first map, you know, is not the best. If I scroll through all my maps that I've ever made, my secret shame of my first map, the title is spelled wrong. You might notice the ratio is fun, is, isn't too bad, but notice this is a really old map. So... Old maps tend to look better in terms of ratio because they're so old, they have had time to gain a lot of likes. This map, if you were to play it, I will warn you, it's a hot mess. It's gone through so many iterations to try to get it to work. But yeah, it's the first map. Everyone's first map is not that great. Compare that to later work. And you can see that, yeah, over time, your maps will get better. So your for your early maps... Don't worry if they're not doing that well. If you upload it and you thought it was great, but it's not getting too many downloads, it's not getting a whole lot of likes, don't feel bad. Because again, if you're just first starting out mapping, a lot of people might not know your name, so they might not be downloading your maps too often. Or it was your first map, it didn't come out that great, so people were like, ah, it wasn't that great. They didn't. They either, they either you know, disliked it or it wasn't good enough for them to like it, so they kind of just moved on. But again, just like any any skill, it gets better with practice. So, if so, if you know, basically, you know, just pick any mapper that you know. Look through their work, compare their early maps to their later maps, and you can actually easily see a large difference over time of maps just generally improving over time. So, yeah, just you know, just you know, be patient, have some fun. As long as you are you are making work that you are proud of, that's the best thing for you. So, like, you know, when I made my first map. Once I actually had a working version of it, after going through so much, so much hard, awkward testing, I felt so proud of that map at that time. It was the best thing I ever did. I felt so accomplished. It was great seeing p people playing my maps. It was great seeing, you know, videos of the maps being on YouTube. It was an awesome time. But now that I've, you know, learned more, looking back on it, I'm embarrassed of that map. <laughs> it is just, oh, uh, the mistakes I have made in my in my earlier work. But again, like I said, it's any skill that, you know, you, you will always get better over time. So just keep at it. Keep, uh, keep, you know, making your maps. And over time, you will get better and better and better. And if at some point, if you do, at some point, you are more than welcome to go back and revisit some of your early work. There are some maps that I know that have basically remade their first map several times over because basically you know after after so much time has passed they've learned so much more they go back fix they make some adjustments to it and then they delete the old version upload the new version and then let time to time go on but then once again they, they more time passes they learn more stuff they might go back and then add more difficulties to it as your first map you might have only included one maybe now after after so much time you've learned how to 
properly make other difficulties, so you start including more difficulties. Maybe you go back and then fix that. I'm actually, you know, myself planning that at some point in the near future. I would like to also go back to some of my early maps and then rework them, redo them, make them better, add in those other difficulties, so that way more people can then play and then enjoy your maps. So, I believe that is about everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial series. So hopefully you guys have learned everything you need to do in order, in order to map stuff. If you guys ever do have any questions with regards to mapping, though, feel free to pop into, into, the, into the Discord server, head on over to the Mapping Discussion channel, and then just ask whatever thing, questions you might have. There are always people over, over here discussing stuff, talking about mapping, talking about the mapping process, discussing patterns, helping new map mappers get started, and just helping as many people as we can get through, uh, basically be able to work on their maps and then everyone can have them they're nice and fun. So if you ever have any questions about anything you know, in regards to any part of the mapping process, either, you know, having issues um, getting the mapper set up, having questions about, you know, using the mapper, having questions about pattern ideas, just, you know, just, or if you just want to, you know, just have generic, you know, random discussions about mapping in general, again, feel free to come on over and we can, you know, start discussing about this stuff. Hope, you know, I hope it's something I will see you guys over in there. I believe that is about it. So that brings Fruhead's Beginner's Guide to Mapping to a close. Hopefully you guys have learned a lot, and maybe at some point I will see you on over in the Magnus Dungeon channel.